Hey everybody, what is going on? My name is Marv Gaming, and today we'll be taking a look at Riptide GP Renegade. At its heart, this new installment of Vector Unit's fast-paced jet ski arcade racer can be seen as a return to form, not only for the arcade racing genre, but also for mobile gaming in general. While Riptide GP Renegade certainly has intriguing core gameplay that reminds me of older Asphalt titles and some unique features unrivaled by other mobile racing games, some aspects of Vector Unit's third Riptide title holds it back from absolute greatness. First, let's talk about how the game looks. To put it simply, while the game doesn't come close to what giants like Gameloft have to offer, the overall look and atmosphere of the game slides just enough above mediocrity to make the game seem above average for most non-AAA mobile games. The game's atmosphere takes me back to older mobile racing titles such as Need for Speed Hot Pursuit and Ground Effect, which is not a bad thing, but there's no graphical innovation, especially in the case of the game's emphasis on the water, which is obviously a massive part of the game. The water is the only part of the game where the graphical fidelity falls a bit flat. The user interface is really nice and consistent, and the menus look really great thematically speaking. The water, however, just doesn't deliver the step up that I expected from Vector Unit but at least it won't make your eyes bleed. Now, let's get on to gameplay, the most important part of any game currently, and this is where the game absolutely shines above other free-to-play racing games such as drag racing games that have plagued the mobile scene these last couple of years. It feels like breaking out of chains when you play Riptide GP Renegade because of how much freedom you have compared to just shifting up and down and watching an animation play on other racing games. The game revolves around driving your hydrojet on different tracks set in different diverse settings such as an underwater city and a forest being set on fire. Different modes such as slalom and classic race mode diversify the gameplay enough without making the player feel overwhelmed. During the race, players can, can perform amazing stunts off of ramps and jumps to accumulate boost to zoom ahead of AI opponents or other players through online multiplayer. The stunts look amazing and it feels super satisfying to, to learn new stunts and complete them off of an epic jump. Overall, the gameplay is extremely smooth and most importantly, it's simply fun. I want to touch on the storyline and single player for a bit. While it is definitely appreciated, the story doesn't add anything very meaningful to the game, but it's there, and it's nothing to complain about. However, the single player mode itself has a ton of championships and races, and it can sometimes look a bit daunting to a new player, especially for me when I first downloaded the game. But for single player mode, there is definitely some repetition present, but it's nothing too crazy once you start getting into the rhythm of winning races. While I feel that some of the repetition could have been avoided by shortening some of the events and championships, the single player is a nice experience that it feels satisfying to progress in and is fun to play. Last, but certainly not least, I want to talk about the extra quirks and features that are included with the game. These small additions make a huge impact. The Vector Unit definitely went above and beyond and showed how console and PC features can in fact make their way onto mobile. Let's get the less exciting things out of the way first. So, in addition to the single player campaign, you have the choice of climbing the leaderboards through single player mode and challenge mode, having fun in practicing your skills in quick race mode and racing other people online through synchronous multiplayer. One downside with this mode to iOS, however, is that it works through Game Center. While it physically works, Game Center itself is fairly hard to predict in terms of reliability and I would have certainly preferred synchronous multiplayer through another client as opposed to Game Center. But there's never really anyone online unfortunately, so in the long run there really isn't any harm to using Game Center. Another mode that is severely underrated in gaming these days is split screen mode and I am extremely happy to say that split screen mode is included with Riptide GP Renegade. If you have two MFI controllers on iOS, you can play with a buddy on any track with any mode. I really appreciate this inclusion and I hope that more games include this feature, especially as mobile devices become even more powerful. Let's talk about the Hydro Jets themselves for a moment. In addition to including 9 distinct Hydro Jets to unlock, you can also customize the color and decal of your Hydro Jet. However, these aren't just normal Hydro Jets. When you boost in-game, they actually transform into cooler looking Hydro Jets. I love the attention to detail in these transformations and the animations look stunning. This niche feature is really quite awesome and the detail of each Hydro Jet makes the game feel more complete. Overall, I think Vector Unit have put together a very fun and enjoyable experience that is certainly worth the $3 price tag. Thanks for watching this review, guys. You can find Vector Unit's link to their Twitter account in the description. And uh, which game should I review next? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.